Hey, it's Camo with the Nashville Access Show presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments, where taste matters. Got a cool show for you today. Uh, her name is Liddy Clark. She's got a brand new single called Hit and Run, and we want to introduce her to you. Come on in, Liddy. Oh, it's, it's great to have you on the show today. Great to be here. Uh, we'll talk about your shirt later. Oh, oh boy. I'm excited <laughs> to talk about the shirt. I'm a big fan of this shirt. It's funny because... Uh, I was walking in behind you, and I thought, oh, she's got her shirt on backwards. And then I looked at you, and you don't, but you do. I do, but I don't. It's one of those two-sided shirts so that I can wear this side one day, and this side the next day, and nobody will ever tell. Yeah, which is a whole lot better than, you know, wearing your underwear one way and then turning it inside out. Yeah, so the yeah. Shirt. It's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Fashion, man. <laughs> Always changing. It's great to have you on the show. Um, been hearing some excellent things about you. You've got a brand new single called Hit and Run. Tell, let's talk about the single first. Yeah. Then... Well, uh, I wrote this song a few years ago with some pals of mine down in South Florida when I was really starting to get into co-writing. And I think I came in with this line. Uh, it, it was a lie, it was a fairy tale, the shortest one. It was a hit and run. And so we basically built out the chorus from there and then the verses and everything. And it was about a betrayal that I had actually had yeah. back then pretty recently. It was a pretty good friend of mine who had just kind of cut off all ties with me and went off to do some pretty not so good things. <laughs> and so I wrote it sort of from the perspective of a breakup because sometimes friendship breakups can be pretty traumatizing yeah. as much as an emotional, you know, romantic breakup. Yeah. And so I wrote it from that perspective, and it's been good finally getting to have it out into the world because it has been in my uh, catalog for so long, and being able to reproduce it with uh, Michael Davey up here in Nashville, he kind of brought a whole new sound to it and like slowed it down a little bit, or like, I don't know, it's, it's weird to describe exactly all the producer yeah. things that he did, but he did something really cool with it. And I, I love the track, I love how the vocals got to mix with the track, I'm just really stoked that everyone's able to hear it now. Is it is that cool seeing something that you worked on and, and not so recently, yeah. but finally come to life? And when a producer comes in and brings their vision to it, um, mm -hmm. what what's that the feeling of that like? It's really cool because it's like rediscovering the song all over again. Because we had an original you know demo track for the right. song a few years ago, and then. I think about a year ago we brought Michael Davy in and just hearing this song, I think we sent him the vocal stems and maybe an acoustic guitar and that was it. And then he just kind of recreated the track from there. And when we finally got the track back, like all fully produced and like completely different than what it used to be, yeah. it was just like hearing a brand new song for the first time and being like, oh, I think I wrote this. This is really cool. Do you ever have that worry though that between going into the studio and laying down the stuff mm -hmm. and it coming out the other end, that it's it's going to be a letdown. It's going to be, oh, that's not the way I heard that song. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely happened a few times, yeah. and it's not necessarily in one's fault. I mean, yeah. sometimes there's just miscommunication, but we always go back in and try and figure out where exactly we need to fix the problem and where exactly we want the track to go. And just come up with some reference tracks and some more like keywords of like metadata and things that we want to have in there. Right. And yeah. I think metadata is part of the recording process. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I, I've learned all these big like keywords. Oh, cool. I'm doing an internship this summer at a publishing company, so I'm learning all the things. Uh, that's that's going to really help you out. Yeah, no, I'm super stoked. I'm actually still in school right now, learning about music industry. So, where are you going to school? Uh, USC, out in wow. California. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, you're from Texas? I was born in Texas. I grew up mostly in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up mostly in Florida. And then I go to school out in California, but I'm here for the summer. Wow. So I am all over the place, <laughs> literally and metaphorically. Um, when you're writing a song, do you find it intensely personal? and then bringing this stuff out and then sharing it with people. Is that kind of difficult sometimes? I mean, when I'm just writing in, in my room, or like in a room with other co-writers who I'm like getting personal with, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal because it's more intimate and it's more personal and real. But when you start performing it out for people or release it online, it's like, oh shoot, everyone's gonna hear this now. 
and I hope they like it. I mean, I can't guarantee they're going to like it. I like it, but it definitely is a very scary feeling or just like feeling like there is a chance that people are like, what were you thinking when you wrote this? And I'm just like, I, I thought it was good. I thought I related. But luckily, I haven't actually had that experience yet or ever, knock on chair. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of looks like wood, so I'm going to pretend it is. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, I haven't had that experience, and I've had a few songs where I've been like really on the edge, where it's been like kind of political leaning, but not really, and I was just worried that people were going to take it the wrong way, and it hasn't really happened. I've been getting good responses. So. Uh, yeah, one of those songs, your last single, yeah, was was touching on the experiences with the shooting in South Florida. That's, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, no, I remember being super nervous the day that came out just because everyone who I had talked to before had loved it and was really deeply touched by it. And I actually, the first time I performed that song was in Parkland because they had a Wear Orange a Day, Wear Orange Day event in Parkland at the Parkland Amphitheater and they asked me to perform. And this was actually like the first place I ever played with a full band. I was like 14 or 15 at the time. And it first was like, time with a full band. Yeah. And, and my, playing a song yeah. that's that some would consider controversial. Oh, no, 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 no. I meant, okay, so I played this last year at the Wear Orange event, oh, okay. but when I was like 14, 15, that was my first time with a band. It was a few years oh, okay. ago, and I just remember like my eyelashes melted off on stage because it was so hot and humid there. And it was, it was a good performance, I remember that. And so just going back to that stage where I had like first performed and then performing like a super emotional song like this, I... I didn't break down crying the first time I did it, but there have been instances since where I've had some emotional moments during that. But it, it was really good getting to perform that there and kind of get people's feedback there before I released it out into the world because I wanted to make sure that everyone in the community felt comfortable with it and that it was a message people could get behind. So I'm thankful for that opportunity. It's hard because you want to, in a, in a tragedy like that, you want, you really need to get your emotions out. and and say how this has affected you and how it affects you has nothing to do with politics. Yeah. It's intensely personal mm -hmm. and yet it gets out in the world and everybody's polarized because there's nobody in the middle ground saying, I don't agree with it, but it's a great song. Mm -hmm. It's just, how dare she, and good for her, you know? And, yeah, yeah. and you got two, sides standing off against each other which was the whole point of what the song is saying yeah no i mean i i tried to make it as middle ground as possible the song and i even i waited a few months after the whole shooting happened before i started writing it because i knew i would get very emotional and put all of my like political feelings in there and so i tried to remove that a bit just because i wanted it to be kind of a come together song just like there is a problem happening in this country and so I think, yeah, that was definitely one of my biggest fears is that, you know, somebody sees Parkland shooting and just like as a topic around the song and they immediately assume, oh my gosh, she's trying to force her views on me. How dare she? And it's just like, no, listen to the song. I'm not. I don't want you to believe anything you don't want to believe. But also, let's but, come together. But it, it's, it's not the first time that people don't get this. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I Don't Like Mondays mm -hmm. was about that. Yeah. And there wasn't polarization about yeah. it. The silicone chip inside her head got switched to overload. Yeah. And everybody's looking for an explanation, but there is no reason. They just did it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a touchy topic. Yeah. And I'm thankful that other outlets were actually able to try and help, you know, promote this and that people were willing to listen to the message. And even people like, I, I was born in Texas, all my family is from Texas, so yeah. I have varying political viewpoints in my entire family, like polar opposites sometimes, and I haven't had anyone in my family tell me that they didn't like a song, and even if they were conservative or liberal, yeah. just it, it resonated with everyone, and I think that's kind of a true test of whether or not I was being political with it, so I feel Conservative, good. liberal, or otherwise, mm -hmm. a good song is a good song. Thank you. And I've listened to it, and it is a very good song, and, and intensely, again, intensely personal for you. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely did cry while writing that. I didn't, uh, I was thinking that I was going to bring other people in to write with me, but I realized at the time that it was just something I had to do on my own and sort of express how I was feeling because 
when the whole shooting did happen, I, I was in California and it was, my brother was in his senior year. My littlest brother was in his sophomore year, I'm actually freshman. I can't remember anymore, but <laughs> it was just, it was weird because I knew this place so well. I knew exactly where everybody was and where the subway was that the shooter was hiding out at. And like that was in the Walmart that I go to. Wow. And it, it was just weird because I felt so far away, but at the same time, like right there with everybody. And so it was just kind of putting all those feelings into the song as well. and seeing how other people related to it. And that's what being a great songwriter is all about, is taking those personal experiences and making them accessible yeah. to other people. Because a, the songwriter is not the only one that's experiencing that, those feelings yeah. or emotions or in, in any circumstance, whether it's a shooting or a romance or mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. Drinking no. at a bar, <laughs> except maybe you know, the bare feet on the dash thing. But uh, <laughs> I mean, to each their own experience. Exactly. I think uh, I actually haven't been able to legally be drinking at the bar, uh, relatable, until about two months ago. I just turned twenty-one, so now I'm starting to understand all the drinking <laughs> songs. That the more that I go out and hang out with people at bars, so legally. Yes, of legally. course. Yes, of course. It's, it's, all, yes. it's wrong to drink at your age. It is. it is. Thank you for bringing up that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny too because a lot of the shows out in LA or even in Nashville, you have to be over 21 to get in. I'm just like, I don't want to drink. I just want to listen to the music. Please let me in. Like, I will put an X on my forehead. Like, just tattoo it right there. I'm fine. Just let me in. See, I came up during the days where each state determined their own drinking age. So, yeah. like, I, I'm originally from. Ontario and Canada, so we used to cross over into New York State because mm -hmm. I was 18. Oh. And we went on a road trip down to South Bend, Indiana one year, mm -hmm. and so it was 18 in New York, I think it was 21 in Pennsylvania. <laughs> then Ohio was split. It was 18 for light beer and wine, and 21 oh, for buy yeah, regular beer. Yeah. And then uh, I think Indiana was 21. Mm. So it was it was just a totally different situation. You could go yeah. from one state to the next. No, my mom actually grew up. Uh, I think when she was 19, she lived in Texas. When she was 19, she was able to drink, and then at 20, she couldn't drink. Yeah. And then at 21, she could finally drink again because it was right around that time that they changed the laws where everywhere it had to be 21. Yeah. And so it's just it's so weird because yeah, like it's, she's already like drunk. Yeah. It's been legal, so <laughs> I don't know. Weird times, man. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, well, let's actually have a song. We want to play a song for us, and then uh, we'll talk some more. Well, that is My such a great dandy dandy guitar. Just happened to be here, just to ready see. for playing. <laughs> yeah. The guitar matches your hair. I've gotten that a lot. And I didn't do that intentionally, honestly. I just thought it was a pretty wood and it sounded good. So it's it's just a nice coincidence that it that works out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I'll play my latest single, Hit and Run, because it just came out. We're promoing that. But yeah, this is Hit Run. I'm 
Access show with Camo with my guest Liddy Clark. Um, do you see yourself as a pop singer with country leanings or a country singer with pop leanings? I feel like, I don't know, when I write my songs, they're pretty down the middle country pop, mm -hmm. and then I try to lean more lyrically towards the countryside just because I feel like country music has some of the best lyrics of any genre out there. And so I do that, but mm -hmm. with kind of a mix of pop melodies to kind of use the two, if you will. <laughs> it, it's got a really distinctive sound to it. I really like it. Thank you. Thank you. Who are some of the people that you kind of, uh, growing up, that you looked at as an artist and said, yeah, I want to do that? Yeah, well, it's funny, because I used to do, like, competition cheerleading when I was a little kid. And so whenever we would drive up to, like, the competitions up in Orlando or Jacksonville or even Atlanta, that's like a 12-hour car ride, yeah. So my mom would put on these songs by Tania Twain, John Mayer, and I just remember growing up and like that kind of seeping into my mind while I was sleeping in the car. <laughs> and so definitely that, and I think Taylor Swift was probably my first concert. You can yeah. probably hear that a little bit in there. I think she's a fantastic lyricist and performer. And definitely a lot of John Mayer, and I just even more like recent pop influences like AJR, Julia Michaels, uh, John Bellion. I haven't even heard John Bellion. Yeah, he's, it's interesting, because well, if you listen to like his music, it would be very different than mine. Yeah. But I still, I feel like I take a little bit of something from there, just like his lyrics. And There's a ton of other country influences that have got me going right now. I just, I really love Marin Morris and Brothers Osborne. I feel like they've got a really cool sound, and their song together is fantastic as well. So I, I kind of listen to everything at this point. Marin Morris, to me, is yeah. kind of like the new Shania Twain. Yeah. In that she's she's kind of taking what Shania did, breaking down those kind of pop barriers yeah. in the country and taking them even further. Oh, yeah. I mean, country music nowadays is super pop compared to what it used to be, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's yeah. just an evolution. I, I think every other genre has gone through yeah. the split, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a metalhead, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, it used to just be heavy metal, and now it's metalcore, industrial metal, New wave of British heavy metal. It's yeah. just there's it's all different genres within genres, mm -hmm. and country music is just the last one to fall. It's yeah. it you know if 
people are saying, oh, it ain't country anymore. Well, yeah, there's plenty of traditional stuff yeah. out there. Yeah. Find it. Yeah, it's not sure. getting played on the radio like it used to, but not it's not as there. much. Yeah, definitely a lot of like Texas country out there, like Red Dirt Road stuff. That that's good as well, and that's yeah. very traditional. So uh, we've talked a little bit more. You want to do another song for us? Yeah, we'll I talk again. Love to. Sweet. And the guitar is here. Oh. Well, okay. So, uh, Hit and Run was actually the first single off my next EP that's coming out pretty soon. It's called Dancing in the Dark. And this is another song that's going to be coming off on that EP as well. And it might be one of my favorites I've ever written. Cool. So the song is called Your Ghost. Uh, so you say that's the, the probably your favorite. 
It might be, yeah. It might be your favorite. I, one. I, my favorites change every day at this point. So. <laughs> it's a good thing you don't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's my favorite today. Yeah. Is that, is that what they're like for you it, when you write? Or, you know, is, yeah. is, is it that attachment to the song? Oh, for sure. I mean, you're creating new life essentially in the song verse. And so it's essentially like just birthing a song. It's probably one of the greatest metaphors for having songs is having children. It's just everything feels so personal, and there's like a little piece of you in each one of them. So. But the best thing is you can make money off of the song. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't necessarily lose money every time you make a song, so. Okay, so uh, you're a big star. Who do you want opening for you? Oh, gosh. Probably someone who hasn't even come up yet. I think one of the greatest things that songwriters and artists do nowadays is bring out artists who aren't necessarily established or signed to a label and they like help introduce them to the world that's like my favorite thing about tours nowadays like the mary morris girl tour she has a whole bunch of artists going on that tour some of them aren't even signed to a label yeah. it's just it's all female acts which is so great because there is quite an inequality in country music nowadays and people well, are taking steps to reform it so. well it's there's from what i see there are a lot of excellent women yeah. In country music, it's just radio that's not playing them. Yeah. But uh, I think women have a stronger voice in country music now than they ever have. Oh, for sure. No, it's just it's coming right around the corner. And I just, all the artists were coming out nowadays, all the female country acts, just, it blows my mind every time I see, I hear like another one of them sing. I'm like, wow, that is so uniquely different and so profound. Just like, how have they not been on my radio or streaming yeah. service before? And so it's it's really exciting to be up in this time where female acts are coming up in the country music world and getting stronger voices and being celebrated more often for their differences and how amazing they all are together. It just strikes me, I mean, as a guy listening to guys on the radio, mm -hmm. you kind of think, well, I want to be like that or I want to do what the singer's doing. And, yeah. and to think that women don't want that same experience. That's it's not just, true. That's just, definitely not true. Yeah. As a female who listens to female on country radio, I think I relate to it even more, honestly, yeah. because they are speaking from such a personal experience of being a woman. And I mean, a guy can't really sing about that. So it's, well, it's nice. One or two can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they sing the songs about loving the girl, and then every yeah. girl wants to be that girl. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the late, great Ralph Murphy he always said in a song uh, that if you don't write about a breakup, mm -hmm. write about one of the two people dying. Oh. Because a guy, women will tend to feel sorry for a guy if his girlfriend or wife has died. Mm -hmm. If they've split up, there's always the element that thinks, well, he was probably a jerk anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's always better to kill them off. And <laughs> I mean, people have the liberty to do that in songwriting. I know plenty of songs that have stemmed from like pretty normal stories of like a breakup or just, you know, a bad run in or a bad conversation yeah. that just stem into these like huge like stories that are like cinematic and like, you know, somebody dies. It's just like it didn't really happen that way. But it was inspired by yeah, something pretty exactly. mundane. Uh, so. What's going on the rest of August? You're back in school in September? Uh, yeah, actually late August. Late I August. think it's the last wow. week of that. I'm very excited to go back to school and start playing in California again. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be wrapping up my time in Nashville in August. And I'm going to be going back to LA. So I'm very excited for that. and start my junior year. So Wow. Yeah. Exciting. Yes. And expensive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gotta love school. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. So how can people connect with you online, social? Oh, yeah, I mean, you can find me on www.libertyclark.com, L-I-D-D-Y-C-L-A-R-K, or you can find me on socials on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I think they're all just at Liddy Clark. So nice. I'm everywhere. Just all the social medias. Find me on there. I promise I'm there. So. All right. Thanks for being here. It's yeah, really been great having you as a guest on the show today. And... Uh, if you like Liddy, then go and search out her music and get to know her and her stuff a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. Buy it or stream it two million times Yes. to help her pay for USC. I'm sure <laughs> not even that much would help you pay for USC. Yeah, that's right. It's but, $500, I think. But yeah, anyway, yeah. it's something. It'll keep you like in that. coffee for the year. Yes.
All right. Keep getting my avocado toast. <laughs> Thanks for watching the National Access Show with Camo, presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments. Make sure you catch me on Chris Country all across the UK every Sunday at midday following Bobby Bones and in Tamworth, Australia on 88.9 Tamworth Radio with Jody Crosby and John Wolf Thursday mornings. We'll see you next time.